Baltimore, one of Maryland's most dangerous yet beautiful cities. There lived a girl by the name of Dawn L. Ashland. Dawn, a middle child of nine siblings who wore her heart on her sleeve. She could literally feel the pain of others and it was extremely hard for her to let it go. Dawn was tall, stout, and very strong. She had long hair that almost reached the floor and it shined so bright in the sunlight. Her eyes were so intense they seemed to be able to see right through others. Even though Dawn could use all these things to make others afraid of her, she remained humble and instead of leading with fear, she led with her beautiful smile. Dawn loved her family very much, more than anything in the world. One day Dawn was home when she heard a loud noise from the downstairs. It was so loud it made the floor shake. Dawn thought for sure it was an earthquake. She ran downstairs in search of her brother, but when she got near the bottom of the steps, she saw standing in the living room a tall, pale man. He was bald, with a large red and black dragon tattoo wrapped all the way around his head. He stood there barefoot, wearing all white, with a silver eye patch over his eye. The mean man lifted her brother James in the air while yelling and screaming in a foreign language. Das muerto, hijo. <laughs> Dawn was in shock, and she couldn't speak. She saw the man toss her brother across the room, hitting the cement wall. He slammed into it so hard he left a crack down the middle of the wallpaper. James yelled so loud it made Dawn cringe, and she couldn't watch any longer. She felt her stomach turning and the room began to spin. Dawn couldn't hold herself up any longer. She passed out right there on the steps. Dawn woke up at the hospital, her family all sitting around her bed, minus one. Dawn's mother calmly tried to explain to her what all happened the day the madman came into the house, preparing her to hear the news that her brother had died. Your brother James, he didn't make it, baby. He's gone. Dawn did not take the news of her brother's death well at all. On that day, it felt like something also died inside of Dawn. But oddly enough, it also felt like something else was born. Dawn continued to replay what happened that day over and over again in her mind. <laughs> what if I called the police? What if I yelled and scared him off? I could have thrown something, anything, and given my brother a chance to get out of the hold. <laughs> Dawn felt a huge amount of guilt and responsibility for what happened to James. One night, Dawn was saying her prayers before bed when she heard a sound. Dawn? She couldn't be sure, but it sounded like her brother James. Dawn's heart began to pound faster and faster as she listened hard for the sound again. Dawn, I just want you to know that I'm all right. I'm happy and you shouldn't worry about me. This was not your fault. I will always love you, baby sister, and I am glad that you were not hurt. In that moment, I could have prayed for me, but I chose to pray for you. My prayer was for God to protect you from the bad man, and before he took me, I saw you laying down, out of sight. I saw the bad man leave, and at that moment, I was at peace. Now, Don, you can be at peace. Dawn got up in shock, thinking about what she had just heard. She was nervous and shaken, but suddenly it all stopped. Her eyes lit up, and she had... An epiphany. I get it now. I understand how life should work. I am my brother's keeper. James could have prayed for himself, but instead he prayed for me. Having enough love for others to deny yourself should be what is expected of us as human beings. I vow to do whatever I can to protect my fellow man, just as my brother protected me. 
From that day forward, Dawn made helping others her purpose. She did all she could to stop others from doing bad things and see the error in their ways. Following the example of her brother, Dawn decided to reject fear. She would risk it all to help others when she saw them being hurt at school and anywhere else. She spoke up for those who couldn't speak for themselves, even when it caused her to get hurt defending them. Her friends continued to get upset with her for involving herself in other people's problems, so in the end, Dawn lost most of her friends. They were not willing to risk themselves to defend her, but Dawn continued with her purpose. She grew older and started to see just how big the responsibility she had taken on really was. She learned how to fight in order to protect herself and others, but even with that, she knew it would only be a matter of time before the task took a toll on her body. How can I continue keeping everyone safe if I get too old to protect myself? There's no way I could protect them. <laughs> Dawn began to cry. No. Suddenly, Dawn jumped up and stormed out of her house. She walked up and down the streets of Baltimore feeling sad and confused. Dawn felt it would be so much easier if she gave up. Just as that thought popped in her head, she thought about that horrible day, the day her brother was killed. What if my brother had given up on me? What if he wouldn't have had enough strength to deny himself and pray for me? Dawn felt energy grow as she stood there. She felt power rise from the bottom of her feet to the top of her head. I can't give up now, I refuse. I'll fight till I can't fight no more. Dawn continued patrolling the streets, night after night, looking for people who needed help. Soon the streets were quiet. No crime. Dawn had saved her city. <sighs> it's over. No crime, no fear, no one in need of help. went out today for a reported kidnapping in New York. Yes, just after 2 p.m., a white truck was reported speeding out of a neighborhood and the person believed to have been kidnapped was last seen near the vehicle. If there are any reports of the vehicle, please call local law enforcement. <laughs> Is this ever ended? Suddenly Dawn was awakened by a very intensely bright light. She thought for sure it was the sunlight, but as she kept looking, the light became unbearably bright. Too bright to look directly at it. So she continued peeking, trying to get a glance. A loud thunderous sound startled Dawn. She couldn't tell if it was the sound of a man or a woman, but whoever it was, they knew her name. Dawn! Uh, yes? Get up, my child. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can. Who are you? Why are you up here? I'm here for you. You. The one who is so special to me. You are a pure soul, and I don't want to see you cry. Get up. Stand up straight and listen clearly to me. I have watched you for many years. All of your life, to be exact. You have given all your energy to making the world, or at least the part you can influence, a better place. So now, Don, I'm giving you something special. I'm going to give you some of my energy. Lift your head and raise your arms. Close your eyes and believe. You are about to travel through space and time. It started with a rumble. Then the ground started to shake. 
The windows flew open and a rushing mighty wind burst through. Pictures fell off the wall and broke into pieces and the room started to spin in circles. Dawn couldn't breathe, but strangely she felt safe. The room started to spin faster and Dawn tried to hold on to her dresser but it fell to the ground. She tried yelling but nothing came out of her mouth. When suddenly Dawn could feel air between her toes tickling her feet, she knew then she was flying. Dawn opened her eyes slowly and she saw stars of all shapes and sizes floating around the beautiful darkness. Millions of stars, all the planets she learned about in school right there in front of her eyes. Dawn saw the earth behind her moving further and further away. And though she was a little scared, she loved it. Fear not. I am still with you. I am always with you. Who are you? Why have you taken me away from my home? I'm not taking you away from your home. I'm taking you home. Wait. I don't want to leave all my friends and family in the world because things are getting so bad. Even those I don't know, I still want to help them. I plan to take you away, but for a short time. You will return as if you had never left. Dawn continued traveling in silence until she landed into a huge, gorgeous green orchard. It was filled with bright, fresh fruit. She saw apples, bananas, grapes, kiwis, oranges, and every other kind of fruit you could imagine. Some fruits she had never seen before in her life. She saw beautiful flowers and big full trees. There were purple roses and blue tulips, lavender, daisies, and translucent leaves. This garden had every flower known to man and many that man had never seen. Dawn saw animals of every breed roaming free. They were not afraid and no one was afraid of them. She walked up to a large lion, scared and ready to run if she needed. But the lion just bowed his head and let her rub him at the crown. Dawn had never seen anything like this before. She was so happy, she almost didn't want to go back to Earth. Dawn, isn't this beautiful? The most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm pleased to be here, but where is here? You are in Nivea, my home. Dawn. You are here because I have chosen you to do great work. I have chosen you to protect the land you love so much. Times are going to get worse, much worse. And you will have to be the one who saves those who can't save themselves. How am I going to do that? I'm only one person. I can't be everywhere, and even if I could, I won't win up against everybody. No, you can't do it alone. And you won't have to. Don, lift up your hands and trust me. Oh, no. I just got here. Am I going back through space again? No, Don. Just relax. Trust and believe. And all will be revealed. Don felt a strange, soft substance around the top of her head, and it sent a tickle down her spine. The feeling traveled from her head to her neck, and she began to shake when she felt a warmth go around her waist and down her feet. It was as if she were standing inside a powerful tornado, and she soaked up all of its strength. Suddenly she felt a hand on her belly, and it pushed her backwards, but it didn't hurt. Within the push, she felt a fire rise inside of her. The heat was everywhere. She could feel it in her fingernails and in her pinky toes, Every inch of her body was on fire, but nothing hurt. Dawn felt more safe in that moment than she had ever felt before. She raised her hand high, preparing to get the full impartation, when a loud roar sounded, and suddenly, everything stopped. When Dawn opened her eyes, she was back inside her bedroom. She looked all around and saw her bed was neatly made, with her pink pillow on top just like she left it. Her once broken pictures were all back on the wall just as they were, 
and nothing at all was out of place. It was as if nothing had happened. And immediately, Dawn began to question her experience. What happened? Was it all a dream? What's going on? Just as Dawn started to doubt, she looked out of her window and saw something amazing. It almost made her faint. She saw the beautiful green gardens from before. She saw the passion fruit and wild berries. She saw miles and miles of flowers and tall, full trees with bright green leaves. It was magnificent. Wow. It's still just as beautiful, but I'm at home or in a garden. Don, you are no longer of your own. I am with you. You have my power within you. You are both home and in the garden. You can be everywhere and nowhere if only your heart desires. There are no limits over you, my child. You want to protect the world from evil that lives there. Then start by imparting wisdom, knowledge, and power into others. Choose those with like minds and hearts who love others to guard the good from the bad. You have given yourself for so long. I want you to impart now. Train others to represent love and mercy. And you, my child, should protect them as I protect you. One condition remains. You must groom and let go. Allow those to live, love, and lose on their own. Provide their protection only when they need it. And I will protect with nurturing when you are struggling. As of today, you will be the mother of the earth and you shall be called Mother Dawn. Mother Dawn.